apart from it being a crime, is morally wrong. It's morally wrong for you to take the life of another. And I don't believe that someone's life will give you wealth. I don't know where the money will come from, what currency that will be. I'm still in doubt. My name is Ada Tadiobrix. I'm the chairperson of Ida Rivers. We should expect access to justice, more access to justice for women and children. We should expect that there are complaints to be heard and we'll do what we can to help. Our duty as FIDA is to promote, protect, preserve the rights of women and children and also enhance this right, their welfare. This we will do under my watch. Okay, one of our challenges is the fact that we have people that come to complain and in the middle of a matter, they withdraw and we don't see them. You come, you complain, I've been raped, this has happened to me. We have filed actions, matter is in court, and the next thing you can't find that person. Or the person tells you, oh, my conscience says I should settle, my church says I should settle. I don't want to continue with this matter anymore. Those are what some of the challenges. Then we have the challenge, you know, it's a free, it's a voluntary organization. We have funding challenges. Most of our funds come from whatever the members can raise. And you know everybody has issues. So we have challenges for funds. We, we have been looking up to the public. We've been looking up to, IC, uh, to NGOs. We're looking up to donors, to funders. Then concerning the other matter, we've been speaking, we've been talking to them, we've been doing sensitization that, look, this matter you're doing, once it has, is a, there's a criminal undertone to it, it's no longer just a private matter. It's a state matter, it's an offense against the state. Rape is not an offense against a person alone. Yes, someone has been raped, that's a complainant, but the state is the one complaining. The state is the one taking you to court. Our own is to follow up this matter, to ensure that the person gets justice. So that's how we do it. We've been doing sensitizations, we've been going to the radio markets and different places to tell people, look, this is what you should do when your rights are infringed. That is how we've been surmounting our challenges. Wow. Um, let me not just say we've started, we just started these campaigns. These campaigns have been ongoing for a long while. It's just that we're following up on it. Um, we noticed that despite the fact that there are laws saying female genital mutilation, harmful traditional practices is an offense, it has not stopped. So what we did basically, what we did basically was to go back to communities where we have, we hear they have this things going, ongoing, and we ask them to stop. We were recently in a community in Abua Odua, Omwakwa, and we realized that in that community, it's not something they were planning to stop anyhow. We gave them the laws, we told them the, uh, the penalties, we told them what was involved in female genital mutilation, the side effects, and uh, let me say some of them were willing to change. Some of them were willing to change. They said, okay, this is a law. They now know it's an offense. That is not just a culture, it's not just a way of life. It's an offense for you to do this to anybody. So both the person procuring the uh, genital mutilation and the person uh, asking the person to go on uh, has committed an offense. Well, the one of school has been the one that has been very worrisome. There has been a rapid rise in complaints. Well, up to last week, by Friday last week, I had complaints from some schools. Oh, when we're talking of children being defiled, we're not talking of children of that are, let's say, uh, 10, uh, 15. Or, we're talking of babies, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old. It's been on the rise. And as an association, we're trying to ensure that this does not go on. That whoever is an offender is made to face the law. 
we're asking them not to, we're asking schools, we're asking proprietors, we're asking parents not to shield whoever is the offender. Let us know. We'll follow up. We'll go with them with the, we'll be there to hold their hands, to go with them with the police. We'll go with them to court. We'll provide legal services where needed. We'll take them to the medical for their medical services. Whatever is needed, we'll provide. We'll ensure that justice is done. Because it's on the rise, then the, the, the issue of um, what they call it, ritual killing, that is another one that we don't know where it's coming from. So there's a need for proper sensitization. Proper sensitization to know that this thing you're doing, apart from it being a crime, is morally wrong. It's morally wrong for you to take the life of another. And I don't believe that someone's life will give you wealth. I don't know where the money will come from, what currency that will be. I'm still in doubt. So that's the thing. So there's a need for further sensitization. We have talked, but we will keep talking. We will keep emphasizing that this is wrong. We will not stop talking. We can't stop talking, Nizawa. It's a burden we have placed on ourselves and it's something we must do. Our gender bills that were thrown away, five gender bills, not just uh, female participation, in the way other ones. But when you're talking about this one, I don't think, yes, it has been done. We we're looking for a platform. We have lobbied, we had asked for, we have negotiated and it got thrown away. We're asking right now, the women are at the National Assembly asking for those bills to be looked at again by the National Assembly. But pending that Federal River State branch, we have our own plans. We, we have an event upcoming. It's supposed to be in celebration of the International Women's Day. We have an event, a workshop actually, for increased participation of women in politics. It's something we plan on doing in this month. We're calling on all female, men, eh, female politicians, those that are aspiring to be politicians, and those that have gotten there. They are all part of this program. They will be part of this program. It's an, a workshop that we're planning to see how we can get more women, um, women to participate in politics. We need it. We can't stop. We can't say because uh, the law was not passed, we will not move on. We will not work and strive to get what we want. We'll strive to get what we want. Oh, um, we have actually trans, uh, translated this into the simplified English. And we have been doing monthly sensitizations. We have in our work plan, in our organization's work plan, we have already fixed every month. We plan on going to 23 local governments. We have already started, we've done some local governments. We go from local government to local government. We go from schools to schools. We go from community to community to let them know that this law is in place, that this law is here not to just protect, it will help stop all forms of violence, psychological violence, physical violence. People will now know that you cannot throw your spouse out of your house, matrimonial. You can't throw your spouse out of the matrimonial home. It's an offense. People will know that you cannot say, oh, someone that lives with you, you will not provide. You must provide for whoever lives with you. You cannot say, oh, this is my word, will not go to school. It is an offense. So all that is provided for in the law. The law also says that rape is an offense. And the punishment for rape under the VAP Act is life imprisonment. There's something we need to draw me to, to the ears of people. There are lots of things that in that law. That law is a beautiful law that has come to help us stop end all forms of violence in the society.